The rise is the journey. It's overcoming those obstacles. And the shine is that moment where you're just like, look at that, you know, that feeling, that awe-inspiring feeling. And that was like what we wanted to inspire in people that interacted with our brand. You're listening to Studio 22. Welcome to Studio 22. I'm Brock O'Hearn. I'm here with my co-host, Will Meldman. And we are sitting with the founder and CEO of Yori. What's going on, Joe? Yeah, Brock and Will. Thanks for having me on. Dude, thanks for coming on, man. How you doing? I've been good, you know? Just yeah. having a perfect troubadour day. How do you not have a perfect day here? I know. Yeah. This place is special. R- run us through the routine. What 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 you had on the docket for, for the day? Well, we had a board meeting for Viore this morning, so I kind of had to get up and, and get right into it and get prepped. But um, when we got done, I was able to play a little golf and hang with some of the guys, your, your, your father, Mike, and Persall and, and some of the other folks, and, um, and then got a little massage, had some food, and, and here I am. Awesome, man. Yeah, we appreciate you coming in, man. We were all at uh, Justin Bieber's concert last night. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. yeah, that was pretty That's cool. Fun. It was cool, man. The crowds were insane over there. Yeah. He's talented, man. Like no matter what, you know, the genre or taste of music is, it's like you gotta respect the 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 hustle and the talent. My wife started listening to Bieber with he dropped an album, gosh, this is probably but I don't even know, a year, two years ago. And uh my wife was a big fan. And so I started hearing it around the house and I was like, Yeah. <laughs> I cool, can get right? down with this. Yeah, man. I mean, he's he's a talented artist. Yeah. Um, so it was fun. I'd never been to a show like that. Um, it was it was fun. Yeah, neither had I. We yeah. As soon as you hear every single fan singing every single lyric and everyone screaming at the same time, and yeah. then just the stage presence he has and the dancing, the routine, I'm like, dude, how do you remember all that, man? Oh, uh, it's impressive. Crazy. There's something about watching a human do what they're intended to do, or like living out their gift. You know, that's just so inspiring. Yeah. Like I, I was on a surf trip in Fiji and this um, one of the boatmen was um, playing his guitar on kind of like an open mic. He was just playing while we were all eating dinner. And this girl, she was probably 14 years old, asked if she could come up to the mic and, and sing a song. And he was like, of course, you know, and she brought a ukulele up and literally had the entire place just transfixed. Like it was a, an original song that she wrote Everybody was like crying. It was like the, the next coming of Billie Eilish. And, you know, everybody was like, how can we help you? Like, you're going to be the next, you know. Wow. But just watching people do their thing is just something that, you know, I love to witness. Yeah. And it's cool when they actually follow through and like go, like pursue it, right? Because so many people get in their own way and kind of get self-defeating or they're afraid of what, you know, of the failure. Uh, and, and I think it's when you're doing it because in something you love and you're called to do, you got to do it. Cause you got to give that back to the world, you know? Yeah. 100%. Yeah. yeah. That's awesome. Speaking of callings, you have made one of the coolest, one of my favorite companies, uh, ever. And since I tried it, I can't remember how many years ago, but <laughs> I was on a GQ shoot. Um, and they gifted me Viore and I swear to you, I threw everything else up after <laughs> and I've only been wearing Viore since man. So yeah. Where'd you come up with the idea and like, or how, what was the conception of, uh, of Yori? I mean, it's been a long path for me. You know, I was, um, gosh, it kind of dates back to, you know, when I graduated college, I got this opportunity to go work in the fashion industry in Milan for a couple of years modeling. And um, that was kind of my first glimpse behind the curtain, so to speak, at the fashion industry. And, you know, after doing it for a little bit, I didn't really resonate with the modeling. I, you know, wasn't really cut out for that, but I loved watching designers build collections and the way they worked with fabric and textiles and told stories. And I think that just stuck with me. Um, and so when I got back, I went to work for Ernst & Young, a big CPA firm, kind of cut my teeth. And that was like my MBA. And while I was there, I just couldn't get this itch out of my, you know, I just wanted to start a brand. And I just, so I, I met a girl and we started dating and she was a designer and, um, you know, her and I decided to start our first little women's contemporary line together. And so that was my first kind of little foray into the world of, of building clothing. And, um, you know, we were doing it all ourselves. We were going to LA on the weekends, buying fabric, you know, working with local cut and sew um, vendors in LA and San Diego, we were building these little collections on the weekends. We would go hit the coast and we'd go sell to specialty stores. This is like before the internet, you know, oh, wow. 
before you could sell product on the internet. And, and then, uh, you know, that business didn't really go anywhere. I started another like men's t-shirt line. So I'd always been, tr- you know, like working with clothing and textiles and I just loved it. Um, but at the same time, um, I had to pay the bills. And so I had started a, a financial and IT um, recruiting and staffing company called Vaco um, in San Diego with some partners. And we had some success. And I was about, gosh, probably about six years into it. And I was dealing with a lot of back pain because I grew up playing football and lacrosse. And um, a friend suggested I try yoga. And it was like one of the first therapeutic things I had ever done for my body to actually heal and I fell in love with the practice. I was going to yoga every day. I was on my mat religiously. And that was when I started paying attention to the clothing that I was wearing for athletic performance. You know, before that, I just kind of grew up with the big brands, you know, that were super inspiring as a kid when I thought I was going to be the next, you know, professional athlete and still had a shot, you know. But as a guy in my early 30s, um, you know, my needs had changed. And, you know, I was a surfer lived in Southern California. And a lot of my friends and I would wear board shorts to the gym or we'd wear board shorts to to yoga because that we identified as surfers. You know, we didn't identify necessarily as a competitive athlete anymore or a jock or, you know, the big brands that I have a tremendous amount of respect for, they were kind of over distributed. You know, they were selling at a lot of big sporting goods. The product kind of quality wasn't there. A lot of them were more focused on footwear. Apparel was kind of an afterthought. And, um, you know, a lot of it was more inspired by kind of urban street culture or team sports. And here we were on the beach wearing surf clothes. We were like, there's got to be a way to bridge these worlds because, you know, we wanted product that would support us through a tough workout. Um, But at the same time, we wanted product that was really comfortable and super wearable and would effortlessly transition into our everyday lives. And so that was really the, the kind of I, like the the seed that was originally planted that led us on this journey um, to create Viore. That's great. Yeah, I grew up on a, in a beach city myself in uh, Orange County, Dana Point, uh, Laguna Beach area, and it was board shorts every day, man. We were at the <laughs> yeah. beach, we were surfing, and you know, I can't even tell you how many times I went straight from the beach. Honestly, just go to the gym and go work out and do my thing, you know. So it's totally like you're saying when you guys came up with that, it's such a great way to do it, and it, it allows so much more movement. You know what I mean? Your clothing, and it's just I've tried everything. You know, yeah. and I realized I don't really like like the uh, polyester clothing, you know, so yeah. much. And I don't, and I usually work out in cotton, but then it gets real sweaty and it gets damp or it stretches funny, you know. Uh, so what you guys have done is given the ability to, you know, be comfortable and have full range of movement. Like I can feel wearing this shirt right now that I can do yoga, no problem. And I'll be yeah. able to not be limited by the clothing. Yeah. You know, our whole thing was built to move in styled for life. That was our design ethos. And so you know, a lot of performance brands, in our opinion, kind of over-designed. It was like, they wanted the product to look like you were on your way to the gym. It was like a look and a feel. It was an archetype of what activewear was supposed to look like. So when we launched our brand, we took it to Equinox and Nordstrom, all these companies that are now great partners of ours. But at the time, when I wheeled those first samples in, they were like, we don't get it. <laughs> like, what, what is this stuff? Is this like swimwear? Like it sure doesn't look like active wear. And so we came up with a lot of friction. That's why we had to really pivot to build the business direct to consumer, um, which ended up being a blessing. But, you know, we really had to lead with the customer because a lot of people that had been in the industry a long time just didn't, it didn't check that box as active wear out of the mm. gate. So, you know, we really, we call ourselves a new perspective on performance apparel because we really did have to challenge that, you know, that ethos of what activewear is supposed to look and feel like. Yeah. I feel like, you know, if you look at kind of every major big company, they all have a distinct brand narrative, like a starting off, like a need case. How do you solve that? And then, you know, like a unique story to it. So I love really being able to hear, you know, that story behind Viore because it's, it makes so much sense when you love and wear the product so often. Yeah, I mean, my my favorite thing are are those sweatpants. <laughs> I just yeah. like, and then I put I, you know, you can literally go like sleep in the sweatpants, put on the you know like out outerwear pants that you can like go out in, and then you you know it's like a cycle. Yeah, <laughs> you stay in it all day. Yeah, totally. I mean, we are we were really inspired by brands like James Purse that just are effortless in their design. You know, it's timeless, it's classic, yeah. it's sophisticated. 
you know, we didn't want to get caught up in like too much trend. We just wanted to do the basics and do them really well. You know, focus on incredible fabrics. Like we have such a unique tactile sensibility. You know, over 50% of the materials we work with, we custom develop to meet that need. So, oh, wow. you know, it's not cotton, but we want it to feel like cotton. You know, we don't want to, to work with those shiny synthetic polyesters that has dominated the active landscape for a long time. Everything we make has that really brushed, nice, soft um, hand. So you just want to live in it, yeah. but, but it performs. Yeah. And so that's, that's our little sweet spot. That's cool. Yeah. You guys are killing it. Uh, were there any like, uh, speed, like roadblocks or speed bumps along the way things that like, you know, you thought, man, this is a lot tougher than I thought it was going to be. I mean, in the early days, we just didn't know if we had a business. Um, I wasn't great at raising money. I hadn't built a successful apparel brand and starting an apparel brand is, I mean, you know, Brock, like pursuing acting, it's, it's, it's tough. There's not a lot of barriers to entry. And I had started two in the past that, you know, great learning experiences. So I don't like to use the word failures, but, but they were growth opportunities for me. Um, and so it was tough to raise money. It was kind of like going to your friends and family and saying, I'm going to start a band. We're going to be the next Rolling Stones. Like, give me some money so I can go on the road. You know, yeah. <laughs> my friends were like, well, why are you going to be the one to solve this problem? And, um, and so it was tough in those early days to get the money, to get this thing going. And, and uh, you know, we were up against brands that were raising 25 to 50, sometimes a hundred million dollars kind of in that running to like, who's going to be the next big athleisure brand. And here we were raised, you know, a few hundred thousand dollars and we had to make this thing work. And so in the, in the early days, we didn't know if we had a business and our marketing and product kind of messaging our fit, we, we were struggling to kind of define that, that, that beta and that engine of growth. And so, um, you know, our premise early was that we could build a brand really focused on yoga for guys, because, you know, as a guy who was practicing yoga, I was seeing a lot of guys showing up to yoga studios and we were like, okay, as a surfer, I know there's 4 million people that surf in the United States. And I was like, I grew up with those brands, Billabong, Quicksilver, Volcom. I mean, the list goes on. There's so many of them competing for that market. And then in the yoga space, there were 30 million people practicing yoga in the US and 30% of wow. them were men and men was the fastest growing demo. So I'm like, so inherently you have a marketplace that's twice as big as the surf market just for men and nobody's speaking to them in a unique way. Like Lulu had launched and Lulu was doing amazing things, um, bringing more innovation, quality, better attention to fit and detail to the space. But they were really laser focused on um, their female consumer. Yeah. Men's was kind of cast aside in the corner as kind of an afterthought. So yeah, like our whole thing was like, let's, let's do something, you know, really meaningful and special for men. And um and so that was, that was kind of the kicking off point. And That's, yeah. It's yeah. interesting to hear the numbers on, you know, surfing versus yoga. I, I would have guessed there'd be, I guess, like more surfers in that and a little less yoga. But I mean, you really got to look at those analytics and, and kind of base everything around the numbers, right? Yeah. I mean, that's cool to hear too, everything. And, yeah. and what I was going to say, you know, to finish that thought was like, you know, that premise that we could launch with a focus on yoga was, a, a, it was, you know, I guess you could say a good jumping off point, but we quickly learned that the aperture wasn't wide enough and that a lot of guys, while they were practicing yoga, they didn't necessarily identify as a yogi in the way that they identified as like a surfer or a golfer or a runner. And yoga was a kind of a tool that they had in the kit to support the things that they love to do. And so we started listening to our customers and doing surveys and, and like trying to get as much feedback as we could on what they were wearing the product for, what they liked, what they didn't like. And, you know, we found that yoga participation was like number 20 on the list. Like they were doing just about everything under the sun before they were wearing our product to yoga. And here we were on Facebook, like this is the new men's yoga, you know, wow. um, brand. And so as soon as we started recognizing that there was a much broader opportunity than just focusing on yoga, and we got in tune with how we were actually wearing the product, it was like, it was much more about versatility and this idea of being able to transition from activity to activity to your everyday life. Once we started shifting our messaging, 
we really started to find our groove, but it wasn't until we went through some really tough times trying to keep the lights on that, that we were able to define that engine of growth and then go back to our investors, raise a little bit more money. And then we were really on our way. Yeah, it's really cool hearing that you listen to uh, the people with surveys, people that are actually wearing it, right? Because then you, that's one thing I think uh, some people don't do and they miss. And it's like, if you're not listening to the actual customer, then what are you doing? Because they're the ones that are buying it. It's just like watching a movie, you know, it's, it's, if you're going to continually keep putting movies out and you're not listening to the audience that's there, you're eventually going to lose your audience. And then what, you're not going to have a company to, yeah. let, to make movies anymore. You know what I mean? 100%. I think having that awareness as an entrepreneur is so important. I always say clarity is the ultimate form of current, the ultimate currency in entrepreneurship. And having that clarity and that ability to, to um, be aware of what the market is telling you and being able to pivot and respond accordingly, that's what entrepreneurship is all about. Because very rarely does your business premise when you first write the plan and you go launch, very rarely is that exact form of the plan where you end up. So what's really important is that you are in tune with your customer and you develop a culture where you know that customer is prioritized. And if you can build a culture that's in tune with the customer, you're able to pivot and respond. And ultimately you, you find your way through it all, but it's a journey. Yeah. It, it reminds me, we were talking to coach Lee about like communication and a relationship and it's almost like a relationship with the customer and that awareness, that clarity is the communication. Right. Yeah. I mean, it, it's pretty yeah. interesting, like yeah. making those tie-ins. Yeah. Are there any things that you've done uh, in your own life that you think have attri uh, been attri have, have You're good. <laughs> paid homage, I guess. Are there any things you've done that have paid homage to building this brand? Like as far as mental health, uh, you said yoga is, was a big factor too. Um, things, yeah. Things along that category. I mean, I think, you know, in entrepreneurship, you know, for me, it's like staying balanced through it all has been really important. And it, the journey for me has started on the yoga mat. That's where the seed was originally planted and yoga for me led to a mindfulness practice. You know, meditation was very important to me. I still have a pretty strong meditation practice. And then meditation led to breath work. And breath work for me was like an, a big unlock to be able to go deeper. And, you know, I find that in the chaos of it all, and, you know, it, it only gets busier and busier as you grow. It's like finding that thing that you can come back to that, that helps you kind of find your center and keep your feet on the ground um, it ultimately helps to cultivate that clarity and, and really helps you steer the ship, um, through what can be kind of foggy, <laughs> absolutely yeah. Oh, foggy yeah. days. Yeah. We were, we were speaking a bit about, you know, anxiety and, and the forward thinking where you can get caught up in, in the grand scheme of thing versus being present and not paying attention to what needs your attention right now. And I think grounding is a huge factor for me as well. Like I have my workouts and meditation as well, but my workouts for me are something that help me ground right away. First thing in the morning, set my, set me up for the day. Cause when I'm pushing hard and, and I'm giving everything I got, I can't do anything but focus on that. You know, yeah. it's like for me riding a motorcycle, it's the same kind of thing. I have to be present. You know, I'm sure surfing is the same kind of vibe, you know? Yeah. So it's just, it's finding that thing that can set you up for success in your future. And I'm a huge advocate for health. You know, me and Will talk about stuff that we do and work out a lot all the time. Uh, but we talk about the things that we like to add to the regimen. And since that, uh, you know, space has been growing so much, it's been yeah. fun to go off of other people, what they're doing, you know, cause you can have two people that wear Viore, but they got two completely different <laughs> lifestyles. You know what I mean? I started doing ice baths and saunas and red light therapy, uh, breathing techniques or something that I've been really looking forward to, uh, doing, especially when you're doing the ice baths, you know, yeah. uh, it's, it's been a factor and I think there's no limit. That's my favorite thing about the space and about health and wellness in general is there's no limit and I've never found a negative that comes out of it. You know 100%. what I mean? 100%. And you know, there's so much information that's being shared every day. I mean, that's the beauty of podcasts and what you guys are doing. It's like you're disseminating information. It's like with the internet, like information has been democratized. It's everywhere. And, and it's up to us, like how much we want to chew off. Brock, we were talking last night about being curious it's yeah. like letting that curiosity lead you. You know, I love to take like an active interest in my health and well being. So I'm always trying new things, like getting in the ice, getting in the sauna, taking some new supplement, yeah. you know, trying new breathing, breathing techniques. Um, and, and it's like 
what I love is just figuring out what works for me. You know, I used to just go to yoga class and I would do these like power vinyasa classes and I was trying to figure out how to put myself in a pretzel and stand on one arm, you know? <laughs> and I learned after time that like that wasn't serving me, you know? And I found that like having a lighter yoga practice with some meditation and getting out and like mountain biking, being out in nature is like much more grounding for me. So, you know, it's just a like constant learning um, and an evolution. You just got to keep peeling the onion and figuring out what works for you. That's it. 100%. I apply that a lot to like nutrition. Like I really had to find what vegetables I like, right? Like what meats I enjoy cooking and, and really like you, you make a decision. It's a split second decision, but it can make a huge difference in your day and the next day, how you feel your energy levels, right? Like, yeah. do I go for the donut or do I go for the, a little bit of sorbet, right? <laughs> like either both of them are going to like quench the sugar craving, but one's going to make me feel a lot better than the other. Yeah. And like, it really is a, you know, staying in the present moment that'll help you long-term. So I, and, but also knowing like taste is a perfect example. Like for clothing, you need taste and for food, you need taste. So it's like, what do you like? What's easy for you? What can I eat before or after a workout? Like literally just staying true to yourself, getting that routine down, knowing what works, super important. Yeah. And totally. There's a, a healthy dose of self-awareness that comes with it, but then also creating habits. Yeah. And you can't get too dogmatic about anything. You know, that's the yeah. other thing that I've learned for me. It's like, if I get overly dogmatic about any kind of health, you know, phase or fad, it, um, I find myself a little out of balance. Like I, for me, it's like, I got to also go out and have some fun and cut loose a little bit yeah. and, you know, come back and you know as long as I if I find that balance that's where I'm doing my best and yeah. showing up the best in the world I built this truck out for that exact reason it's a fully overland capable uh rig that I you know I've got coolest truck <laughs> in the world by the way <laughs> it's fall I'll, I'll show it to you after the fact man but uh yeah I got you know the tent set up the cooler the the uh, fridge, the water, the gasoline, anything you could think of I put yeah. on, I put on this truck and love doing trips to where I can just you know Get out to a spot that I love, be out of, you know, everything, can completely disconnect, ground, you know, take my shoes off and just enjoy, you know, and whether yeah. it's to get out there to write or just to meditate or just to be alone yeah. in my own thoughts, you know, and really just focus and, and recharge. Uh, I found that's what I need, yeah. you know, and when it comes to habits, and this is where, you know, before I forgot uh, where I was kind of going was, uh, you know, it's pain versus pleasure, right? And it's that mentality of, do I choose the temporary pleasure or the temporary pain? And temporary pain leads to long-term pleasure. Temporary pleasure, which is grabbing the donut, doing the thing that you shouldn't, you know, uh, in the habits that we create leads to, you know, long-term pain. Uh, and it's just, you got to figure it out. And it's having that discipline, yeah. right? And knowing yourself enough to be like, look, I need this temporary pain or uh, a temporary pleasure right now. And I don't care what it does later because right now I need that. Otherwise, yeah. I'm going to crack. Oh, yeah. You know what I mean? Or do I continue continually work hard and go through the pain method to get to my long-term goals? And it's like finding that balance within yourself yeah. and knowing, okay, where are my limits? Is How much is this going to affect my long-term goals and, and what I want to do and what I want to achieve? And uh, it's so cool to hear what you do, man. And And you obviously are, you know, uh, you seem like a very centered person, a very well-balanced person. And I think you have to be to have uh, the success you have with this company and everything you're doing. And uh, we love hearing. So the more you want to share about what you do, man, <laughs> yeah. keep it coming. Well, I just, so many of the things you just hit on, Brock, um, resonate. And not only like with me personally, but with the values of our brand. You know, Viore, um, our whole, it started as kind of our tagline for our return policy because we just wanted to make sure our customers were always stoked. But it's really our ethos for our company. And that's called our investment in happiness philosophy in doing business. But it's all about, you know, happiness is a choice and it requires an investment. You know, mm. it requires an active interest in it. And our whole motto at Viore is the rise, the shine. And it's all about finding that balance and that rhythm. I like to climb mountains. That's how I get out into nature. My friends and I are trying to climb all the 14,000 foot peaks in California. Wow. That's cool. And, you know, anybody that's climbed a mountain knows that on the way up, it can be hell. You know, your feet hurt. You got blisters. At about 10, 11,000 feet, I start getting a headache. My vision yeah. gets a little blurry. And then you're sleeping at about 12,000 feet. You don't get any sleep. Then yeah. you're up at three in the morning making a push for the summit. 
But something about that experience when you rise up in the face of adversity and you prove to yourself what you're capable of and you get to the summit, that's the shine. You know, the yeah. rise is the journey. It's overcoming yeah. those obstacles. And the shine is that moment where you're just like, look at that, you know, that feeling, that awe-inspiring feeling. And that was like what we wanted to inspire in people that interacted with our brand was the rise, the shine. And so everything that you just said, I was like, yes, yeah. yes, yeah. yes. Yeah. yeah, that's awesome. And what you're saying too, man, it's like a, a climbing peaks. It's really what it's all about. And when you get there, it's a different view. It's a different perspective that you wouldn't have had and you wouldn't have known what you're capable of because people can talk about it. But going and doing it is a whole different thing. Yeah. How many? Uh, how many have you climbed? We've done six of them. Six. So right. We've nice. got there's twelve, so we got six more. Awesome. And since I had kids, we've slowed down the pace a little bit, yeah. but we're gonna get back on it. That's cool, man. You can I, check it I, off. I can't. Yeah, that stuff is like, it's so inspiring to me, and like, because I, I could just never imagine myself being able to do it. So it's like when I see people do it and hear about it, I'm just like literally blown away. Yeah. And like free, free solo. Have you seen that? Oh yeah. yeah. I mean, that's next level. Like we're on our feet climbing, you know, we get some ice crampons out, but like, the, I mean, what those guys are doing is so next level. Yeah. I, well, for sure. Right. I mean, it's like almost absurdly next level. And, but when I saw that documentary, I literally 20 minutes in, I go, that's going to win best or best uh, documentary at the Oscars. Yeah. Like it, it's just too big of a feat for humanity. Totally. To not win. It's like, it's that fucking cool. It but, goes um, back to what we were talking about, like watching a human do what they're put on this earth to do. There's something about that. Like as a student of life and somebody who's curious, watching somebody do something remarkable is like as human beings, as you know, we just, we love to see that, you know, that's a, that's a story that we just all yeah. resonate with. Phelps in a pool, Jordan on a basketball court. I'm right. I mean, it's like, yeah. It's, it's like the uh, it's evolution of mankind, really, but it's also showing what's possible because everyone thinks it's impossible until you do it. I forgot, it was like, I don't know if it was a six minute or f under the five minute mile. And it was like, and no one thought it right. was possible, right? Until it was done. And then like seven more people that year did it or some, some number that was impossible before, right? Yeah. But it's being able, you see that in a lot in, uh, in you know, BMX and skateboarding and some of those extreme sports where it's like, okay, no one ever thought you could do a backflip on a motorcycle, right? And then boom. Someone's doing a double backflip and a triple <laughs> right. backflip and a front flip and like all these other crazy stuff. And you're like, this is insane. Cause I grew up skateboarding and surfing. Tony Hawk's 900. Yeah, man. And, mm -hmm. and then now 900 is like something, a, a, you know, a six year old does on a, week, <laughs> on like a Wednesday morning, you know what I mean? Uh, but it's so cool to see that. Cause like it's, we're pushing ourselves to our limits and then realizing that we don't have any. You know, yeah. and how far can we go? And it's really like, I always have been a firm believer that the limitations we have are the ones we place on ourselves. And once you rid yourself of that, the sky is the limit. There's it's not even, you know, there is no limit. Yeah. And I'm a huge fan of that. And it's fun and exciting, like you're saying, to watch people do what they're put here to do. And uh, I'm excited to see what comes out of it, man. The next 10 years of, of with technology, with what people are achieving, it's, it's going to be a wild ride and everyone will be wearing Viore. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. The human spirit, man. It's yeah. uh it's something to witness. Yeah. Yeah, man. What are your favorite Viori products to wear when you're climbing? You know, the Ripstop Climber um was kind of born out of this place where we we wanted to build a great climbing pant. Um I was doing a lot of rock climbing in gyms mostly, but we wanted a pant that could transition into everyday life. So it was like this idea of being able to get out on a trail um or wear it in New York. And, um, so that's one of my favorite pants we make. Um, and then, you know, all of our technical tees are great base layer. So they all work great in the mountains. Um, we do some really good, like light transitional outerwear. Our echo bomber is one of my personal favorites. It's like a 60 gram prima loft insulation dries super fast, but it's lightweight and packable. And it's great for, yeah. you know, the, the Sierras in the summer for, for hiking. I love awesome. that. Yeah, dude, you're getting me fired up. I want to start training for some of these uh, peak climbs, dude. <laughs> Maybe you want to go outdoors and just, like, experience nature. Yeah. Well, dude, you go on one of those trips, and, like, it's like a spirit march. Like, the way up is not enjoyable for me. I don't enjoy it. But, man, when I get back to my car and I'm just driving home, inevitably, it's like I feel like I'm, like, 40 pounds lighter 
it, I always shed like some weird little tear comes out of my eye and I'm like, where did that come from? <laughs> I guess I needed to cry, yeah. <laughs> but, but there's something about it. It's just like peeling the onion, you know, yeah. getting back down to what's important. Yeah. Really seeing what you're capable of. Uh, you mentioned surfing, yoga, you know, mountain climbing, rock climbing. Uh, what other hobbies, things you like to do, man? A couple of years ago, um, one of the best blessings came into my life. My friends, um, I was at a party and my buddies, some of my best friends were like, yeah, we've been riding mountain bikes. And I'm like, mountain bikes? I was like picturing like some like granola person at REI, like riding a dorky <laughs> mountain bike. You know, I'm yeah. like, really? Yeah. And they're like, dude, you should come and check this out. And so uh, they let me borrow one of their bikes and I went with them and I kind of got hooked. And now, you know, what's weird is like living in Southern California, we're surrounded by nature, you yeah. know, but I was kind of always looking to the West, like to the ocean, or I would go skiing in the winter, but like, there's a lot of incredible hills and little mountains in Southern California that I had never explored. And getting into mountain biking has been such a gift because like three days a week, my buddies and I meet at sunrise and we go ride for an hour and a half, two hours, and we get an incredible workout. We get connected to each other. We get connected to nature. We're out in the middle of the woods. We're figuring it out when there's a problem. And it's just like such a great way to start your day. And um, I'm like a different person for having found mountain biking. And awesome. I, just, wow. I just love it. Yeah, that's great. Um, that's definitely something that I want to get into, especially having my truck. It's it's a fun addition to add in there and go to some of these spots. I've, I got a buddy, uh, Ryan, who's like an extreme. Dude, this guy is wild. <laughs> uh, we go snowboarding and he's like looking for what a hundred foot cliff he can jump right off. I'm like, I'm not following you on that one, buddy. He's doing the run. <laughs> but up in Washington, you see some of the, yeah, exactly. Some of the trails, man. And uh, it is incredible. It's it's pretty impressive what you can do. And it's, and it's you know, it's still like, it's teetering ex dangerous, but also extremely fun, right? Oh, yeah. And that's where like, you feel probably most alive, I think. Oh man, since I started, I've lost the skin off my arms like twice, yeah. lost the skin off my leg. I uh, blew out my rotator cuff, my supraspinatus um, told full tear. So it's not without a lot of pain and suffering, but yeah. <laughs> you get that adrenaline rush. It's like you're all fired up like you're a kid again. You're yeah. high-fiving your buddies, yeah. you know? Yeah, you're just great. having a great time. That's cool. But that's life, right? Pain and suffering, man. Yeah. It's about having a good time along the way when you, when you can get it in. Yeah, finding something like that that you can add to your routine and, and switch it up a little bit and, and get that adrenaline rush out of, super important. Yeah. Like, for me, it was wakeboarding. Wakeboarding in the summer, like, being able to fly 20 feet in the air on a wakeboard and like, <laughs> that's you know, who knows what's going to happen. Usually you land it like 90% of the time. Yeah. But that's like, that's what it's all about is, is finding that as I get older, I do a little more wake surfing Yeah, because you go a little slower, you know, you don't really fall. So like I'm a little more timid yeah. with it, but, um, but yeah, that nothing really beats being out in nature. And yeah. like you said, being with friends and, and experiencing it like that. Yeah, for sure. Did you uh, ever imagine Viore would get to this point or was it something you kind of planned since the, the get-go? You know, we started the business in a garage. Um, mutual friend of ours, Mike Persall, who's, you know, pretty um, involved in, in discovery. Um, he was one of our first investors and, uh, you know, he was like, hey, you want to use this garage? Like, you don't have to pay for an office. And I was like, yeah. So I called my head of marketing who was with me, our first um, team member on this journey. And I'm like, Hey, you want to uh, get an office or are you cool working in this garage? <laughs> and she was like, no, we don't have to pay rent. Let's take the garage. I'm like, you're my girl. Yeah. <laughs> um, so um, yeah, I mean, in those days we were just trying to do something that we loved, you know, and we feel so blessed and grateful that it has turned into what it has, but you know, we're really here just in service to our customer in service to the journey. Like it's, it's such a gift entrepreneurship because every day is a new day. You never know what kind of challenges or problems you got to solve. And we get the blessing of being able to create products that we love that, that add value to our lives. And so we're just having fun. And the fact mm -hmm. that it's gotten so big, you know, it comes with different challenges. And um, so it's like, you know, we were never really, we didn't go into it with the intention, like we're going to build something big. We just went into it. Like I want the second chapter of my life to be about doing something that I love. The first chapter, I didn't, I didn't grow up with much money in my family. And, uh, and so for me, business was always this thing where I was like, I want to prove that I can do it. 
that I can make a living, you know, that I can put food on the table. And, um, I grew up, it was a weird story. Cause like we were like the country bumpkins. I grew up on this little Island called Vashon. And then we moved to Bellevue, which was really affluent because my mom wanted us to get a good education. So we moved to this really affluent town, but we were like the poorest kids in town. <laughs> and, uh, and so I think business for me was always like, I want to have what those kids had when I was a kid. But then once I did it and I started that staffing company and I was successful as a young guy in my twenties, I was like, this isn't all there is for me, you know? And I wanted to do something that I loved. And so Viore was just, it was like everything that I loved in this world was, was Viore. And so that was the intention was just to be able to show up. And I wanted the second half of my career to be about doing something that I loved every day. And the fact that it's now something we get to share with the rest of the world is just so exciting and, 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 and fun. And, Absolutely. But we're just yeah. super grateful. That's so cool, man. Yeah. And that's, that's actually so funny to hear that. Cause it's a very similar line to the way I grew up, you know, and, and I remember moving when we did eventually move to orange County, you know, and there's still moments with like food stamps and trying to figure it out. And like, I remember I got arrested once for stealing clothes because I wore the same clothes for three years in a row. You know what I mean? <laughs> so it was just a wild ride and obviously stealing's bad. Don't steal. Uh, <laughs> but, um, yeah, man, it was one of those things where I was like, I want to be successful. I want to earn my success. I want to figure it out. And I, but at the same time, I was very comfortable not having anything. So I wasn't afraid to fail. Cause like, where, how much lower can you go? You know? And, and I figured, let me go do what I love. You know, yeah. I had an opportunity to play football and it wasn't what I love. Like I love football, but it wasn't what I grew up with. I wasn't, I grew up, you know, skating, surfing, you know, drawing, you know, painting, doing all kinds of different stuff, but watching movies. Yeah. And I was like, that was my escape. My real escape was movies as a child. And I'm, I want to give that back one day. Yeah. And so what I've been doing is chasing my dream. And like you're saying, I've, I've been involved in different companies and worked with so many different brands and had such a great time doing it. But it, I was like, I don't resonate with this as much, you know, but at the end of the day, every day that I go to work and every day I have the opportunity to go to work or create work, you know, we we're talking a lot about creating yesterday. Yeah. Um, I'm happy, man. And yeah. that's where the fun is at. And it's like being able to give back in that way where if I can give back how I was given when I was young, I don't know who it's going to touch, who it's going to affect, you know, but at the end of the day, I'm, I'm loving every second I do it, you know, and then this has come around and working out, working with one of my best friends, creating a podcast, diving into the minds of people that are doing incredibly cool things, man, and, and, and having incredible success and being curious, right? Yeah. This is what it's all about because this is fun. We haven't not had fun with any one of these. It's been a grind. It's been, you know. You guys have been grinding. Yeah. <laughs> it's been a blast. I yeah. love it. And, and that, but that's what it takes, right? And it's, you got to realize uh, what it's going to take to make this happen. We're willing to sacrifice and do the work. And, and you know, we realize we have something special here and we just want to have fun with it. Yeah. And I mean, that, that, that old saying that if you find out, find something you love, you never have to work a day. It's like a little cheesy and corny, you know? Yeah, yeah. But it is true. The trick is finding out what you love and what lights you up. You know, a lot of people think like, oh, that's going to be what lights me up. And, you know, it's yeah. a journey to figure that out. You know, it didn't hit for me until a much later in my life. Yeah. And, uh, and that's totally cool, you know, yeah. and it's, and it's awesome to go try a couple of things and figure it out and realize totally. like, okay, like you said, peeling the onion. Well, guess what? That wasn't the one. And I'm going to keep peeling until I get to that point. And it's been a fun ride. It's exciting. And, and, and we're excited to have you on and, and, you know, kind of keep this train going, but you know, what's, uh. What's in the future for you, Ari? You just gonna? Man, we just got so much stuff going on. We we just launched our international business. We're gonna open our first store in London this year. Oh wow! <clears throat> um, hopefully, fingers crossed, we'll open our first store in China next year. Um, launching the business, um, our dot com business, shipping wholesale accounts around the world. So, you know, the international um, expansion is a is a big um, lift for us. Um, and then we're, our, you know. My baby, what I love more than anything, well, I, I'm a product person first and foremost. So we're doing a lot on the product front. You know, one of the things people don't realize about Viore is that 50% of our business is men's and 50% of our business is women's. So we have got really deep and rich product pipelines. We've got so many cool new products coming in men's and women's. We're launching a full outerwear range for next fall, which is going to be super, I mean, it's just something we're really proud of. Um, so a lot of cool things happening in product, but you know, the second thing that we love is connecting with community. And we do that through our stores. You know, when we launched the brand, we didn't really have, you know, 
a deep pockets to go out and market the brand online and, you know, the wholesale accounts, we talked about how tough that was, you know, in the early days. Um, but we were able to get a pop-up retail store and we just started throwing parties and bringing people together. And we would have these awesome workouts. We would meet there. Um, we'd go for a workout and then we'd have bands and DJs and we would have artists come in and we turned half the store into an art gallery and we would showcase the work of emerging artists. Love that. And we would just celebrate their their craft and we would bring the community together. We would invite other people. Somebody's got a w- new wine company, a new beer company or some new food company. We'd invite them in and we'd throw these huge parties. And before you know it, like felt like half the town was coming to these parties. <laughs> And then after that, we started seeing people walking around town wearing our product. And it was like a badge. You know, they were a part of the community, part of the tribe. And it was really built from there outwards. And that same ethos is what we bring to every single store that we open. We have 17 today. We'll have 32 by the end of this year. We're going to open another 20, 25 next year. Wow. And um, every store we open, we are thinking, how can we be in service to this community? Like, what can we contribute? What can we add? How can we bring people together and share in meaningful experiences? And so that to me is what lights me up. And we're really fired up about what we're doing on that front. I had a marketing question, but that was like exactly what I was going to ask about. I love that collaborative um, feeling to the marketing, right? It's very communal and it's like very inspiring for other people to get involved. And you can like you know, prop up other people that might not have the opportunity to do it or, or whatever it is, even just like partnering with brands that can, but it's still fun to do it together. Right. Yeah. 100%. And you know, here being at Troubadour, obviously like how great of an experience it is. The community is so great and how much fun, honestly, we have every single time we go anywhere. And that's one of my favorite things to do is, is get a piece of merch from, you know, one of the stores and to take it because every time I leave, I'm like, I look down and I'm like, true, oh, dude, remember that time we were there? Remember that podcast run we did? You know, and I'm gonna look back every time I see the shirt, and that's what it reminds me of, you know? Yeah. But then at the same time, super comfortable. You know? <laughs> so, well, I mean, I think about when I think about who does community better than anybody, I think about Discovery. I mean, you know, it's really impressive. Yeah. Um, every community has its own feel, but, you know, we just feel blessed to have such a great relationship um, with Discovery. They've embraced Fiori, they brought us in, they've supported us. And, you know, anytime I'm at one of the properties and I get to mix and mingle with the community, it's just like, you feel like you're home, you know, yeah. and it's so aligned with the Viore lifestyle. So, um, it's, it's been really fun. It's awesome. It's awesome to see too. I was going to say it is super in line with Discovery's ethos as well, in terms of just being active and being healthy and, you know, spending time with each other and, and doing all that. So it's cool to see because it's by far my favorite brand to wear like 24 seven. So to see like the discovery logos on it is just like the perfect, two perfect things colliding. So it's awesome. Yeah. I mean, it's been the amount of support that discovery has given us from a pretty early stage has been, you know, it's been really helpful and uh, you know, you need little angels that, that kind of come to your door on this journey. You know, some people call it luck or I don't know what you call it, but but those little angels that show up and support you on the way are, are really important um, to your success. And, you know, Discovery's definitely been one of those for us. You know, it's really cool is we, we uh, did a podcast with Randy Gerber and he was talking about building the brand Casamigos. Um, and he said, you know, building a brand for him was all about authenticity, you know, and he's like, there's nothing fake about Casamigos. And it's so cool to sit across from you and to really talk about this more. We hear about you, your lifestyle, your life journey, uh, and then the brand Viore as well. It's, 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 there is no disconnect when it comes to the authenticity that this brand truly came from you and your vision for it. And, and obviously as it grew and it made a community of people as well, it's like, there, there's the authenticity. It's like, it's not just some big wig sitting in an office. It's like, no, you're living, breathing it, dude. You're mountain biking, you're doing, the thing, you're doing the yoga, you know, climbing I mean? mountains. Exactly. Yeah. And conquering them, man. Yeah. yeah it's, well, I appreciate you guys saying that. I mean, that is the best compliment that, that I could receive. So thank you um, for, for seeing that. I mean, it's been a passion project. It's been a project from the heart from day one. And uh, yeah, it's pretty cool. Yeah, it is cool, man. It's it's cool to see. It's inspiring, dude. And it's uh, you know, when are we gonna make our clothing, Brandon? <laughs> <laughs> I was gonna wear Viore. I'm just gonna wear Viore too. Yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to go down that path. You can't That's make awesome. it any better than that. That's so. true. That's awesome, man. <laughs> well, hell yeah! Thank you so much for the time. 
course. Well, Brock, thank you guys for having me, man. This has been a lot of fun. Likewise, Absolutely. man. Appreciate your time, dude. Enjoy the rest of your time here at uh, Troubadour. I can tell you're, you're going to spend a lot more, obviously. Absolutely. Uh, it's going to be a good time, man. Yeah. Next weekend, I get the family to come out. My wife and two kids, we're coming back. So that's awesome. It'll be fun. Yeah. We're definitely yeah. going to be back. Uh, we've got a lot more people to do podcasts with and, and it's kind of hard to leave, man, to be honest with you. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Appreciate you, man. Thank you guys. Thank, Thank you. Bro. Thanks for watching Studio 22. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and hit the bell. Thanks for tuning in to Studio 22.